Sorry. Test, test, testing. Everyone can hear me. Things are probably going. Yeah, you sound good. Good. Okay, cool. You look good. Thank Aww. you. Appreciate it. <laughs> In my group chat with my friends last night, one of my friends, he came on and he was just like, "Yo, Andrew, you look really healthy." And we're just like, as opposed to like his how unhealthy he's looked for <laughs> what. You look sickly and gaunt usually. Yeah, yeah. Usually you look absolutely awful, but today you look healthy enough. <laughs> There, there you go. There's the, there's the the cold in, the cold intro there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it in. Welcome to the Syrupcast, Mobile Syrup's Canadian tech-focused podcast. I'm Patrick O'Rourke, and Brad Bennett, a man who simply cannot stop refer- referring to himself as the bad boy of tech, is once again across the internet for me at an undisclosed location that's very yellow. It's yellow like the iMac that's sitting beside me. How are you yeah. doing today, Brad? I'm good. Um, I've actually been thinking a lot. I actually had two ideas for undisclosed location jokes, and I had to scrap them because now that we do it on video, people can see me in the same room all the <laughs> time, and it, it's ruined that, that gag. Um, but yeah, I'm here. I'm happy. I'm actually super psyched to be talking about Android, and uh, I will let people know that I did recently get the bad boy of tech Twitter handle. Caught that. And a did you actually? Yeah, I did. That's pretty incredible. I haven't tweeted anything yet. I don't know what I'm going to use it for, but... Uh, Happy to have that. Happy to be here. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what becomes of it. This week, we also have Dean Daly on the podcast. How are you doing, Dean? Hi, I'm good. I am uh, awake today. I wasn't very much awake during Google I.O., but I'm awake today, so that's great. It's a good way to describe I.O., I'd say. <laughs> yeah. I.O. was able to put, I think, half the people watching to sleep in the first 30 minutes for sure. Oh, yeah. So on this week's episode, we've, we've already kind of like reveal our cards here we're going to be talking about io um and we're also going to be talking about uh my various reviews of apple products which i'm still in the process of writing sort of um my imac review well it'll all be on the site by the time this podcast goes up on the friday so you'll you'll be able to find it there i'm also handing over hosting duties to uh bennett for this episode because i am absolutely exhausted this has been like a marathon three review thing and i just have not had time to to plan the podcast so uh bennett it's your show this week and before worn, we get into it go ahead i should have worn a suit i should have really like took this seriously that would have been sick it's like yeah. this is your one shot your one your one opportunity yeah suit clipboard knees weak really arms are sweaty mom's spaghetti what are, what are you wearing what is that sh- sweater it looks nice or shirt I actually got this at a value village. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to read it because it's hilarious. Okay, let's go. Do it. Yeah, I don't know why we're doing this, but here we go. <laughs> it says, and if you know this person, let me know, but it says Timothy E. Bell Memorial Biathlon, second annual, September 19th, 1993, run, bike, run, 5K, 13.5 miles, meters, two miles. Okay. Cool. And that's okay. that's a title. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if somebody made this as a joke or if this is like a real t shirt that somebody made for Memorial Fun Run. I just thought like there's a lot of letters on that shirt and that's a fun color. Here I, am. I like the color. I like scheme. it. Yeah, me yeah. too. Yeah, I think it's it would it would look sick with like a pink a pink windbreaker over top of it. Oh my god. Oh that's sexy. I wish I had a pink windbreaker. Anyway, and I'll about, get you one. um fashion, because that's what this truly is. But Let's jump into the hottest, hottest news of the week. Can we, can we jump in? Yeah. Um, so the first one, this is just something that like is dear to my heart because I love music apps and I love that they're all like, you know, it's a very competitive space where they all kind of have to offer the same thing. So they have to compete in weird ways. But um, Amazon and Apple, or I guess Apple first and then Amazon very shortly after, but it was so short after that it kind of seemed like it was something they were already planning. Um, but both of those companies announced that their hi-fi music tiers are not free, but included now in the $10 subscription. So with something like Tidal, you pay $10 for you know basic music, and then you can pay $20. Um, then you can pay $20 for less, or $20 for high-quality music on top of that. And now Amazon and Apple have just included high-quality music into their base level uh offering so you know if you're paying ten dollars to amazon or ten dollars to apple music already at some point in june you're going to get high quality music that uh you need to listen to with a wire but you know it's pretty it's a pretty exciting proposition and it kind of it it maybe kills title like who wants to pay twenty dollars for high quality music when you could pay ten 
not, not me. It's but... sick, but don't most mm -hmm. Apple like headphones don't work with it? Yeah. So any anything wireless, <laughs> anything wireless doesn't work with it. Well, I, but that's just like that's just life. Like there is like the Aptex, like Qualcomm Aptex and Aptex HD like Codex, and like this headphone supports them, and so do some of my other. Uh, high-end wireless ones but uh, to be honest when you're listening to like actual high quality music it, it's the compression that you're still getting through bluetooth i always find very limiting in terms of like soundscape and if you're like caring enough to be listening to high quality music y you just want to be plugged in there's no real if ands or buts about it it's unfortunate that apple has like no way to plug in the airpods max and make that happen because those headphones are like 900 dollars or whatever and that's kind of ridiculous but and it doesn't work through lightning no, because you would have to go uh, lightning aux, like lightning to aux converter, aux cable, and then lightning to or and then aux to lightning. Like you would have to have a converter on each uh, end, okay. right? Because the only port on the iPhone Max is a lightning port, right? Like yeah, so them. they they do sell lightning to three point five millimeter. Like this this is all hundred percent new to me. I'm I'm not pretending to not know anything. Like I haven't paid attention to any news at all for the last two days because I've been review mode. So it's interesting to to hear that like i can't even use the airpods max with it or the home pod you know also another really the home pod oh my god not even the home pod no <laughs> it's nothing. so what is apple gonna do release like a pair of wired headphones designed specifically for audio files um i wouldn't be surprised if that happens or if there's some sort of like update that allows the airpods max to work or maybe we get like a new beats headphones or something i mean okay yeah but yeah that's that's basically it it's this is really just stealing hi-fi audio files from title as far as i'm concerned and doing it in like a good way because it's like who wants to pay more not me you know like i've been working on a music app compare story and my whole like shtick for deezer was like it's hi-fi is 15 bucks so if you like hi-fi like you know deezer versus title it's not bad and now it's just like i don't i don't know why anyone would get deezer anymore i didn't really know why anyone would get deezer before but like it had that and now it's it's got to me it's tough tough break for deezer and title to slip sure. yeah dean to slip into this just really briefly, because this is about music, Demi Lovato just came out as non-binary. I just got a notification on my screen. That's how it. do you get a notification for that? Just add a little gay. You just get alerts for like. Oh, my friends are talking news. about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like a, how do you, you know, that group. There's like an app. Yeah, I just have like anything LGBT. Yeah. I just, just get notifications. I would love that actually. There's an app for that. Actually, yeah. <laughs> that actually leads right into our next topic, which is a story you wrote, and it's about representation in gaming. Do you want to talk, talk to us a little bit about that and a little bit about the series you're working on related to it? Yeah, for sure. So on Friday, I launched uh, the first part of my series. I've been working on it for a couple months now, and it's about representation in uh, video games, how we need to see a lot more of it. Um, there's the first part of the series just talked about, is there enough rep representation in video games? Uh, and the resounding answer from everyone I interviewed, so I, I interviewed uh, quite a lot of Twitch uh, gamers, uh, YouTube streamers, and uh, developers, and everyone uh, agrees that there's definitely not enough, um, and we definitely need a lot more of it. Uh, our, my next part of the series is going to be about, what is it going to be about? It's going to be why we need, why do we need representation in video games? Um, and that should be coming out in the next in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'm interviewing a couple more people just to add a little bit more flavor to it, to add a little more diversity to the voices. But yeah, it is a lot of fun, and I'm happy that I can shed some light to those who don't realize that uh, representation is um, not in video games necessarily, like specifically uh, to white males. Sis, yeah, straight. yeah, they Peeps. they don't. Realize. <laughs> I can I can definitely have some friends that are like, I don't get it. Like, why do we need all these different Marvel movies? We have good superheroes. And it's like, uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. we're not gonna get into that. <laughs> but but no, honestly, your story is like super great. And if anyone who hasn't read it yet, it's definitely worth checking out. And like, you wrote it in a very like concise way, where it's like, here's the sort of topic, and like, here's the question. Here's how all these different people with these diverse backgrounds have answered it. And like, you get like such a wide scope of um viewpoints that it's it really is like i don't want to call it a must read but like if you haven't read it it's it's very eye-opening in a lot of ways to be honest because there's like things you really don't story. think about is you know you don't think outside your own culture very often thank you i really appreciate that uh, yeah even me um i'm L lgbt and i am black so i think of bipoc and i think about lgbt but i i 
personally myself, I didn't didn't think about uh, the disabled community at first, and it was brought to me. Well, if you're doing these communities, why don't you do that? And I was like, oh my god, you're totally right. So I was happy that someone did bring that up to me before I launched the article, and I'm happy I could include some uh, voices from the disabled community. And I'm looking yeah, to more of- as well. It's gotten a lot of attention too, which is which is cool to see. People message me saying that it's a great story. But uh, Phil Spencer, the head of Xbox, also retweeted it, and like I know that's a company retweeting a story, so it's a little weird for us to be talking about that. But that's somewhat of a big deal that like it 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 did well enough and got enough attention and was such a great story that someone that high up at at Microsoft um, it, it landed on their radar. Yeah, someone yeah. in charge of gaming at like you know a third of the gaming world has potentially read this story and probably like i said probably should have read it and like deser- deserves to see those yeah. viewpoints like super smart very important topic yeah thanks the, guys the one thing the last thing i want to say like that steve Saylor guy which is the i think he's in a wheelchair right like he, in the story he's talking about like how people in wheelchair are always like portrayed as like these like crazy villains and that was something that i had like never realized and i was like that's it just clicked it was like yeah absolutely that's super like messed I up i think like, that was Steve Spawn. Um, Steve Spawn. Who said oh, okay. that? Yeah, yeah. Steve Saylor is blind gamer, and Steve uh, yeah, Spawn yeah. has ma- uh, muscular atrophy, um, so he's stuck in a wheelchair. Um, chair, and um, he was just like, "Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like that's what, if you have an eye patch because you're blind in one eye, you're typically a bad character." Yeah. Um, which Overwatch doesn't really do that. Overwatch is uh, one of those games that are a lot more open, but I, th- th- it's not a narrative game, right? So a lot of narrative games you'll see people with a disability um as someone who is like vengeful and hateful so it's it's yeah i, I yeah. didn't i, didn't, I never really even thought cool about perspective that to so. read it. yeah exactly um but yeah i think moving on to the next piece of hot news and this is a little less touching and more just in the regular vein of mobile syrup <laughs> talking about carriers but apparently canadians have spent over two billion on streaming services in the last year which i mean to me it makes sense because we were locked inside because of the pandemic and did was it like Disney Plus last year or was it the year before? When did it launch? Uh, I mean, Disney Plus launched November of 2019. Okay, so kind of like leading into last year though. Yeah, exactly. Like mid-November 2019 and then um, wasn't it like – isn't there like a free period too? So like, it would make sense, right? That that's true. Is People would have got it for yeah. free for the first bit. But yeah, I mean that's the only one that has come out recently that like all of my friends have. You know what I mean? Like I'll bring up like, oh, you guys watching uh, For All Mankind on Apple TV Plus? And they'll go like, STFU, Brad. No one's watching anything on Apple TV Plus. <laughs> um, so, you know, but like when you bring up Disney Plus, everyone's like, oh, you watching Winter Soldier? You watching uh, Marvel stuff? You watching Aunt- Disney Plus? Weirdly enough, I've been I've uh, been back on the dating apps, um, and I, I've been just talking to random guys, and they, they'll be like, "Yeah, did you watch Palmer on Apple TV Plus?" And like bring it up a lot. I've really? had that like maybe three times last week. It was like, "You're also on Apple TV Plus? That's kind of weird." Yeah, and you're watching Palmer, just yeah, the Lake movie. Yeah, the, uh, the one guy was just like, "I stand for Britney," but Palmer was great. <laughs> wow. And there was another movie. I don't remember which one they said. Someone else said, but yeah, there are people are people are tuning into Apple TV Plus. But I mean, it comes That's free with hear. your your if you buy a new iPhone, right? So yeah. or an Apple product, right? So if I mention Apple TV Plus, any of my friends are like, "What are you talking about? I don't know what that is." <laughs> Apple TV Plus plus what? Yeah, what is that? Is that a new service? Is that another thing that I have to pay for? I'm I'm not gonna pay for anything. Yeah. I just use IPTV and pay some guy five dollars a month and access everything. That's like it's fifteen dollars. All, all those depends on the. That's how much Apple TV Plus is. No, no, right. no. no Apple, Apple TV, TV Plus is like six ninety nine or something. The streaming the streaming thing is like fifteen. If you want live TV, it's fifteen dollars. But if you buy it, um, if you just buy it like outright, it's you just pay that one cost. So you pay like a hundred bucks for that that box so you can get all the streaming for. And then after that, it's free. Or and if you want to, live, it's to be clear, this is very illegal. And oh, one hundred percent endorse I, it. And I don't. I, I'm mentioning one. it because a lot of the people I know that use one, uh, they don't realize that it's illegal. They assume that yeah. it's not because they're paying. Well, for you could just buy like, it at a flea market, right? Yeah. So you yeah, don't think about everybody knows you that everything buy you buy at a flea market is illegal. One yeah, that's true. Um, cool. Literally the other day, this is a little off topic, but kind of related. My dad messaged me. He's like, "Hey, I'm trying to watch this thing on the Roku, and it's the audio and video are unsynced." And like, I have a Roku TV as well, and I used to use Plex a lot, but I haven't used it in a long time. 
but part of the reason I stopped using it is just because the Plex app on Roku will like unsync the audio and video like all the time. Huh. It's just like not worth using. It's I would go to my Apple TV or something to use Plex because it would just be so much better. So I was like telling him that like, yeah, it's a pretty common issue. Like you're probably screwed. Like you're just gonna have to buy it or like <laughs> rent it. Uh, he's like, well, I'm watching it. I was like, it's on Plex. He's like, yeah, like they have this friend who's, I'm not going to name him, I guess, but he is like a big Plex server and a lot of people use it in this group of friends. Um, but I was like, yeah, you know, like Plex is pirated content. He's like, wait, what? <laughs> this is, this is stolen. This is pirated. I was like, yeah, that's pretty much what Plex is. Like maybe he's got a huge, you know, dad, maybe he's got a huge library of DVDs that he's been ripping and putting up there but no. he rips them yeah. live, directly, <laughs> live directly to you which i'm pretty sure is still probably illegal too yeah um, but yeah it was funny just in your point like people don't really realize pirated content in like 2021 just because it's always packaged in such like a nice way now compared to like you know getting everything off pirate by yourself back in the day um but yeah i just thought that was an interesting piece of news canadians two billion on streaming services i don't know streaming fatigue is likely to happen coming out of that i mean i know that i'm kind of sick of paying for all these services i'm sure everyone else is but yeah that's that is and then uh, the last news thing in here that i just shoved in today is uh yesterday somebody caught like trudeau using a fake macbook and i just thought that was absolutely hilarious so i don't know that's all i have to say about that super funny kind of corny um you know i just thought it was hilarious nobody else say eh? no one wants to wade into this i, I, I didn't just read thinking. it tbh you don't even have to read it do you not see the picture somebody put it in general I haven't seen it. Uh, it's just the dude on like an HP with an Apple sticker just stuck to the front. I, I would what? just love to know. Really? Yeah, it's so funny. Yeah. It's so That's funny. hilarious. And I it's like I'd love to know one. the circumstances, like how that happened, like why that happened, like the actual true story behind it. Like, is he trying to look platform agno- agnostic? Like, how, right. how does how does that work? Like, why would you put a sticker on the back of a? It's it's a is it a Dell? It's a Dell laptop, right? I thought it was a Dell, but I think when you or somebody went into the story, it changed it to HP. And the more I looked at it, it, it kind of does look like it is an HP yeah. logo underneath that. Originally, I just saw the circle and I thought it was a Dell, but you can kind of see that like more modern HP in the center now. And I think that was me. I I did that when I killed your your fire headline <laughs> that was a little a little too close to the sun. Just um, a young, hip, cool guy. I, I just saw people on Twitter talking about the fact that it was definitely an HP. I just, I just, I would love to know the real story behind it. It's stupid. It obviously doesn't matter. Like, no, yeah, we had whatever. readers, readers reached out to me and were like, "Why are you writing this? This isn't news." And I'm like, "I don't care. It's funny." Like, yeah, it's it, absolutely not hilarious. everything we publish has to be like an Android update or a serious story. Like, that's we're funny a blog. and it's worth writing about. <laughs> we're we're yeah. also a blog, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> it's a fun story. Like, chill, chill out, relax, man. Yeah, 100%. I have to write these stories. You got to build this base to hopefully get to the point where someday I can interview Trudeau and just simply ask the one question: like, are you a Mac or Windows guy? That would be amazing. Could, I would love to know. Get to the bottom of that. Yeah, I need to like find him on the street. Just like, oh wait, wait, wait a second. You know what he would say, right? Mac or he Windows would be like, guy? he'd be like, well, well, Bradley Bennett. I, I think all use... platforms have their. <laughs> their strengths and their weaknesses and uh, have you heard about pipelines and all this other (laughs) i use mac at work but i use windows at home or something like that that's the game (laughs) that'd be sick i'd love to put game with trudeau sorry (laughs) kind of cool yeah um, but yeah, that's it for the hottest news ending on, you know, not hot news, but still hilarious, you know, actually tweet us, let us know. What do you think? You think Trudeau's a Windows or a Mac guy? Let, it, let us, if anyone's listening and, and wants to weigh in, what do you think? I think we should tweet, tweet that out from the official mobile surf account. Yeah. That'll be our poll. We'll just ask, week. do a poll. Actually, no, I'm not. <laughs> oh my God. Joking. Yeah. I can do a poll. Yeah. Do that that's and good, do a poll. Content. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. I want to write it down, but the leg of my tripod is on my sticky notes and I don't want to like reach and grab them. So we'll just try to remember that one. Fair enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, all so right. we'll move into the next topic, which is not the news. It's basically Pat has reviewed all of the new Apple products at this point, you know, AirTags, the purple iPhone, the iMac, the iPad. He's currently today reviewing the Apple TV, but he has spent some time with it and that review will be live by the time you guys listen to this. But basically we're just gonna ask some quick questions about you know some things we want to know about those and then just jump into IO. So should I just start? Do it up. Um so out of all of the new Apple products, do you think any are are misses or are they all hits? I think is the, the first big question. You know, is anything kind of just like meh, whatever or do you are I mean, you like happy I, with all of them? I think the iPad Pro is the like least exciting update. Like it's cool that yeah. the M1 chip came to it. It was already extremely powerful. The M1 coming to the iPad Pro could mean something down the line in terms of like integrating iPad OS and Mac OS and Mac and iPad in a more unified way. 
Apple's never talked about that, but it's something that could happen. I would say that they're all pretty much hits. Like the IMAX, great. I think it's really cool. Super cute. I have a Love the colors. question about that. Your IMAX. Yeah. So you, in your review, you said that the iMac um, benchmarked the latest iMac. This one benchmarked lower than the last year's iMac. Uh, so it, it benchmarked. It, sorry, it, it benchmarked lower than the the bigger one, like the twenty seven inch. Yeah, it has so, a discrete yeah. graphics card, which which is to be expected, right? Like this isn't designed to replace the twenty seven inch. Okay. That's like their which, pro tier iMac. Which one do um, I have? I believe you have you the pro, have, like super pro. Oh. Does he? With the I'm pretty sure yours is like dark gray, right? It's like it's like no, black, no, 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 silver. No, no, no. It's he, just normal gray. He, oh. he he, oh, he okay. doesn't have that one. I I'm not sure, but I think you have the the 24 inch, um, okay. but the old 24 inch, I think. So this so would be like more multiple, powerful okay. than that. Okay. The, cool. They haven't released a new 27 inch yet. I think it's coming, and I think it's going to solve some of the issues with this one, like the the white bezels. I think it'll have like no bezels possibly. So, um, yeah. And do you think it would lose its um its colors? Because I feel like um if you think about the i if you compare this to the iPhone 12 and the iPhone 12 Pro, the iPhone 12 Pro is only in kind of more boring colors. Like um, I mean, Pacific Blue is great. I enjoy it, but it doesn't come in like yellow or purple or green, right? Whereas yeah, I do. The iPhone, tw- so you think it'll be the same thing? I think I think it'll be like gray and silver, boring, which which sucks. Um. But that that's them like trying to go after that pro audience, right? That that wants something that's like I don't know. They I do think that it's with cool the that these are colored. Too. Yeah. Like well, the, that, the that iPad Air is really colorful, but the iPad Pros are just silver and space gray. That was one of my criticisms of the Pro in my review that went up today. Like it would be great to see at least some of those colors come to the Pro, and there doesn't really seem to be a reason not to. Other than yeah. that's what Apple does with their higher tier devices. They don't even though. the like pro colors, like a navy blue iPad would be cool. Like it would be so nice yeah, to refresh all your stuff one year and just be like, all right, I got the blue iPhone, blue iPad, the blue Mac, feeling like a king. Oh, yeah, because is that with the Apple Watch, too? Mm-hmm. Well, it got the uh, blue treatment. If you go by the rumors, um, there's be a pink i. This is completely out of topic, but there'd be a pink iPhone so Pro. fake. Yeah, yeah I don't believe that at all. Yeah. Um, I liked making that I was image, like, but yeah. Yeah, it looks sick. The only reason I was like, guys, we should write this is because I – it would be cool for a pink iPhone to exist, but that rumor is like so fake. Bennett showed me that Twitter account. What's it called? Like Peng or something? Peng? Yeah. It's yeah, super yeah. random. It like, looking they back tweet out random after, colors. And every yeah. like every like three weeks, they tweet out like a new iPhone, like iPhone 13 with like blank month and blank color and a render. And it's like, all right, you guys keep, tra- you know, if you shoot at enough of these, yeah. you will hit, you will hit something. <laughs> you will get one right eventually, probably so. But, but to, yeah, to the an- pink one looks sick. And that render that they did was actually really well done, too. <laughs> to answer your question, Bennett, I don't think any of them were misses. It's a pretty solid device lineup from Apple. I think they're all pretty great, particularly the Apple TV and the new remote. Um, but oh, if right. I had to pick one that was like a little weaker, I'd say the iPad Pro, just because it's not as exciting. Now, the, how sense. about the... What do you think about the like? The, you already you have tiles already. So what do you think about the air tags in comparison? I, I air tags. I I, I really like them. Yeah. Um, we talked about that a bit on the podcast last week. I think. Yeah. Okay. They're great. Like, don't don't get a tile if you own an you know uh, if you own an iPhone. Don't bother. It's not worth it. Obviously, really? if you're an Android user, go for go for tile because you can't use the air, air tag with it. But yeah. just. And it and it's somewhat not fair because tile mm-hmm. can't take advantage of the U1 chip in the iPhone. But that gives the AirTag such an extreme advantage over what Tile is capable of doing. Interesting. That's um, pretty cool. Going back to that, just what we said last time, I think U1 will start to become much more prominent in Android devices, meaning like Tile will probably be able to use it there. Because Yeah, uh, they're working at, on one. At I.O., they announced like the car key feature, which is basically like your iPhone or your yeah. Android phone could be a car key, and that is either reliant on NFC or U1 functionality. And I really think like, you know, phones will or like at least high-end flagships will be wanting to put in u1 because like who doesn't want to open their car just but like being near it with their phone you know what i mean it's happened if you have u1 it can be in your pocket the car and the phone will know they're near each other and be able to unlock it's really sweet but that's a ways off but i think it will be coming to android um but yeah jumping into the next sort of apple related question to your reviews the imac so it has that magnetic cable right this like mag safe cable in the back and i'm assuming that's because it's so light that if you tripped over the cable it's going to go flying off a table do you think like if you trip the, that's coming out like the magnet is working well the magsafe implementation is good or how easy will it be to knock that that bad boy so 
I didn't talk about that much in the review, and I, I kind of regret it. And I also didn't even include you did like, a photo. It. Did did I mention that? You did. Yeah. Fisher mentioned it. I, I think guess. I wrote I a line in it when I was editing too. Just a quick one. I don't even remember what I did. <laughs> I also wrote a line too. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's in there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. So the magnet's really strong. I think that it depends on how how hard you trip over it, right? Like if if there's like a lot of force, sure. But mm-hmm. if it's just like you're slowly falling over or something like that, I'm not sure that it would it would come out because the magnet feels extremely, extremely strong. Like to get that thing out of there, you have to really yank it. Interesting. That's good to know. I, not that I'm worried about people tripping over the cords, but I just was like, I assume they made it magnet because it's so light because it needs to come out or it'll fall all the time. But so it's good to know that. Um, I think I think it's a little weird that it has a power brick now, like the, the higher end models. They all have the brick. Only the higher end ones have the Ethernet port in the brick. In the brick, yeah. Oh, that was... But still, uh, your point still stands. Yeah, it's a bit uh, odd that they have the brick. I definitely uh, uh, I definitely misunderstood that for your review. And your review don't don't worry, I changed else. it. Okay, cool. You know, what they, you know what they could have done, to be honest, to like mitigate that is like, so the stand is built in, right? There's no way to take this iMac off the stand. Correct, Pat? Okay, so that's something that I also didn't oh. have time to get into. There, is, I believe you can buy a version of this that doesn't come with the stand that can go on like a standard... Um, it's like vase amount? Va- vase amount or whatever. But I don't know... When, I'm look, when I took it out of the box, which like, I'll just mention it really briefly, like the unboxing experience in this, and like, I don't care about unboxing. I hate that crap so much. But it was, it was, it was like something I've never... Like it was crazy, like they thought about every little thing, the way stuff comes out of the box. I've never seen that before from any company, let alone even even Apple. Um, but I, I don't know how you would remove the stand. I didn't look into that. I know you can buy one that doesn't have a stand. Um, okay. But yeah, that, that's all that I know. Interesting. Um, yeah, I was just going to say, like, maybe they could have, like, be, if the stand is always attached, just, like, run the wires there, and then maybe the base of the stand could have been that power brick, A, adding more True. weight to the device on the table, and B, like, and not having a power brick but yeah i guess you know you only can get so much if you want a really sleek computer um but yeah moving on from that the white bezels uh, you're not a fan it seems which to be fair it's a weird change yeah Um, i find i find them distracting i would have preferred the screen to stretch from edge to edge sort of like most windows laptops most like higher end monitors it seems weird to have those bezels there and i have a feeling that like Part of it is just separating this from the eventual 27-inch iMac that's going to not have bezels. That'll be like the differentiating factor. What I think it's weird about that is that on my iMac, it's kind of all black around the edges. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, there's no other color. It's just black. But I think it it makes it look more uh, premium because it's even though it's a smaller screen, even though the bezels are thicker, it makes it look more premium because it's all one uniform color. So maybe if they had, instead of, included in the white but maybe if they made that white yellow to match the color of your the rest of it you, yeah. you wouldn't have noticed so much that would be cool i i don't think i would want it to go with black because i would like really stand out with some of the colors particularly mm-hmm. yellow but having yeah. it match like you just suggested like even if the white i'm just looking at it like that's why i keep looking over here yeah, yeah. If the, i guess we know that because we know where you have it situated but yeah the <laughs> audience <laughs> even if the white like was slightly yellow like just a little tinge to it i think it would look cooler and yeah. be probably a little bit less distracting Apple's like methodol not methodology idea behind the white bezels is that like most people's walls are white, right? So then the bezels will fade into the wall. My walls are white. I didn't experience that. So yeah. I, I don't know how much truth there is to that. Other people could have a different experience though. Um, it it kind of reminds me of like the iPhone, I think it's 5C where it had all these colors on the back and it was very nice. But then you look at the front, it has white. It had white. And it was just a very totally, like, yeah. stark difference. And I, I don't, I think if it just matched it, it would have been nicer. That's a good point. Was the 5C white on the front? I think it was the 5. It's either, I don't know iPhones The 5C very well. was the plastic one. There's been yeah. a bunch of iPhones that have like the white on the front that yeah. people have described as like unsightly. I'm, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know was... iPhones very well. Um, but the, I'm gonna uh, look up the iPhone 5C right now. Do it. The iPhone 5C was sick. I wish I had like one, even if it didn't work, just to like hold it around every once in a while. You know, like I do with my essential phone. I just pull it out. I'm like, you're such a nice so phone. So I see, um, I see black on it. Okay. Is it? Black I don't know if there was there? one that had white too. It's it, as far as I can tell, it's black. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but there was one of them at least. It was like maybe 6S. I don't remember. I don't know iPhones. 
But one of them was like that, and it was just very like yellow on the back, or one color on the back, and then white on the front, and it just looked really ugly. Success. Oh, it was success. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I was going to say is, so iPads have had like white bezels for a while, I guess, or they used to, I don't know if they even do anymore, but it used to be able to get like iPads with white bezels. Um, and always the, I didn't mind the white bezels per se, but there's always like on the inside, if you look at a lot of screens closely, you can see this, but just inside the plastic or glass bezel, bezel, there's like a small black line, usually where you can see the actual edge of the screen. Can you see that on the iMac? Like, if you look at it closely, does it go like white bezel, thin black line, then color, or is it just like white bezel color? Let, let me let me refresh. This yeah, I need I do right need now. you to go. I'm, over gonna, and, I'm like, gonna roll over this here closely. Thank for, you. You, you hear the rolling roll of my wheels? Mm-hmm. I don't I'm think it's worth the walk. The oh, is he that close? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, no, I don't. I don't see it. I don't see it. All right, that's good to know. The, are you talking about like the gap between the screen itself and the white? Yeah. I do see that. Yes, you are correct. There is like a tiny little bit of a gap. So there's like a second millimeter sized bezel. You are you are right. Yeah, it's it's not enough. And the more you like use it, it becomes less distracting, I think. But I just remember the first time I picked up like a white iPad, I was like, I feel cheated. Yeah, I, no, it's I feel the same like, thing. I feel like the pros will get rid of that only because the colors will be so much more muted. So like there will probably be a graphite pro. And it will be darker, so you won't notice that. And the bezels will be probably smaller, but or maybe just more uniformed. Uh, probably, yeah. It's kind of like, yeah. I it, it was just refla- I'm looking back at the iPhone 12 Pro, and it just it's the colors. Yeah, I don't know. Just the colors are nicer. That's all I wanted to say. Um, I think I got two more questions about the iMac, and then just a few questions about the other two things. But a are the speakers as good as everyone says? Did they They're blow great. You away. Okay. Super great. Uh, it sounds like an iPad, an HomePod Mini inside of it. Yeah, I, w- I was bad. shocked. I didn't, yeah. I didn't expect that at all. They're, they're really, really good. Um, I could happily like listen to music on that all day and not want to use like one of the millions of smart speakers I have in my house. That's cool. Yeah, I've heard like people talk about it like that, and it's just like I don't believe it every time I hear it. But it's, it sounds like they're nuts, and I want to. They're really, really it. good. It's. It's crazy. I, I didn't expect that at all, right? And it's coming from this like little tiny so it, it looks like an iPad Pro stuck to a stand. Like it's so yeah. thin and it sounds so good. I, I um, can see how that makes sense. Yeah. I, I feel like iMac speakers are really good, just in general. So just yeah. Mac speakers, honestly, are usually surprised. Like I remember getting the twelve inch MacBook opening up, listening to music and being like, This doesn't seem possible, but this is pretty good. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Um the other thing is how do you feel about all those colored ex- how do you feel about all those colored accessories being like locked behind sort of a pay gate? You know, if you want to get the colored trackpad, it's an extra like sixty dollars. If you want to get the uh, face or not the face idea, the fingerprint ID keyboard, it's also I think sixty dollars, ninety dollars. But it, it, you know, you, like if you want to get the good accessories, it's yeah, costly. I, I think it sucks. Like it would have been great if Apple, like the base level iMac, which is the one I think most people are going to get. Um, it just had all that stuff in the box, right? Because the whole idea is that this is like the only thing you need. Like you need a new computer, you go out, you buy this, you have everything that you need. Um, yeah. I'm and sad it's that, disappointing like... that that's not the not really the case, at least with the base level. With the more expensive one, that's a few hundred more dollars. You get all of that stuff. Um, but yeah, it would have been great to have that included in, in the package. I do think the accessories are really cool and it's neat that they match. Like I have the gold one, yeah. the like gold mouse i'm gonna i I always forget look at that look at that gold oh it's it's pretty um but yeah like that's what sucks to me is like a i don't want that gold mouse because i don't think anyone truly wants an apple mouse because it's not a great mouse but i want the trackpad i don't but i do think that there's people that like that mouse i hate it i absolutely i would never i I would never go out and buy one i hate it but I, i i think there are people out there that like it Um, yeah i guess the gestures if you're using a lot of the gestures on top it's cool but like if i was to get an imac to be honest i'm getting the trackpad i love apple's trackpads i love using trackpads more than mine like i'd rather get the trackpad but the fact that it costs even if you don't want the mouse so like cut the mouse out of the package you're buying a mac no mouse just the trackpad it's still an extra 60 dollars um true the 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 braided cable here though that's that's the the golden ticket right there it's great (laughs) the matching braided lightning cable oh that is nice actually uh wait is it USB C to Lightning? So like you could be using that to fast charge your iPhone. Oh yeah. What do you think I'm gonna be doing? 
Yeah, oh, all night long. Okay, pretty cool. Uh, I guess not all night. It would only last for a shorter period of time, but whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, moving on to the Apple TV. This is a quick question. Does it feel faster? Got a trip upgrade? Do you notice it at all? I would say the, the UI is a little more responsive when you're doing like multitasking um, or not multitasking, but like sw- quickly switching through apps or if mm-hmm. you're like rewinding or fast forwarding. But other than that, like the last Apple TV felt fast enough for the purposes of like a set top box. Yeah. This one, similar to the iPad Pro, like it's all it was already more powerful. This just makes it even more powerful. Um, okay. Yeah. So imagine you're someone with the last gen Apple TV. You, we've now learned it's probably still fast enough. Do you think it's worth it to spend $69 and buy the new remote? I do. Um, okay. That's a lot of money. And I know that you could get like several other companies streaming devices for it. I always <laughs> prefer the Apple TV for, like for that price tag. I always prefer the Apple TV simply because most of the streaming platforms that I use and subscribe to, the best version of their app is available on the Apple TV. And that app launched on the Apple TV first. Because Apple has such a presence in Canada, all of these companies, whether it's like Global, Crave, even something like Hey You, where their app is still trash, like it always comes to the Apple TV first, typically. Not all the time, because I know someone's going to like tweet me and tell me I'm an idiot. Typically yeah, comes me. to the Apple TV first. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's that's why I prefer it. And with that in mind, like as someone who uses the Apple TV as their main streaming device, I have two in my house now paying dropping that 60 bucks or whatever it is for the remote because the original Siri remote sucked so much. I know you like it or sort of like it. I'm looking to have my mind changed. Okay. On fair, it. fair enough. Fair know. enough. The new remote's sick. Like it's great. Yeah. I'm so happy that it exists. It solves all of the problems about the previous remote. I even find myself using the touch controls now. It, it's more accurate. It feels better within that little circle. Nice. Um, and there's like a lot of cool little gestures um, that you can do to kind of like perform different tasks in the operating system cool Uh, does it um when you buy the new apple tv does it come with the remote the new one does yeah but if you if you have the old one um which i guess is the 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 fourth gen the 4k one uh you you would still be getting the old siri remote but you could buy the the new one separately i know nothing about this apple tv but but i'm looking to purchase a new apple tv um just because i now use apple products i guess kind of um and is how much is it that is a good question something i'm, I'm gonna google it something. it's two yeah. something because if, um, you, if you think about the thing, price of it sorry one thing i was just gonna say with pat was like well for the price of this remote you can get multiple other streaming sticks i will mention that the google chromecast with google tv which was had was my main smart tv system i reviewed it i reviewed it very positively i liked it Crashes the most. Apps don't work the most. Really? I I honestly don't use it at all. I use I use it That's sometimes because everything's still logged in. But I've now like re-logged in everything on the Roku OS of my TV, and just because it's more stable, I find I have issues more Dang. issues than I've had with any streaming service in the past. Not that many. Usually you can reset it and it works, but more issues than you'd want from a streaming stick with the Google Chromecast with with the Google TV. You gonna do like a like a three month update? <laughs> Uh, maybe I should, to be you honest. You should, like, yeah. It's it's, I didn't. Really I didn't know that, right? In I already started writing my my review. Um, I, I even have a line about that in it, right? Like mentioning that there's other streaming platform devices that you could purchase for the price of the remote, which is pretty difficult to defend. But and I know that doesn't really change it entirely, but that's something else to keep in mind. And Dean, it's two twenty nine for the thirty two gig new Apple TV. Okay, that's something I might consider. Cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I would say like my Google TV or Google Chromecast. It's very like my personal, you know, how it's been working for me. I'm sure there are people that it does work for and it still works fine. But yeah, like, I don't know. The more I use it, the remote's like mushy and it just crashes like way too much. I hate that shit. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, moving on from the Apple TV questions, just the last two. The iPad Pro, is there a difference between the screens? Do you think mini LED is the future? Actually, that is my last question. So I, I, I do... In my review, there's a bit of like, I'm expecting to people people to call me out on it. Like, I think the mini LED screen looks really good. It 100% looks like the future of portable displays. I've never seen a display that looks that bright, that vibrant, that has HDR that that's good. I've seen it on a TV, but not like something the size of an iPad. But if that's the only reason you're going to go for the big, the 12.9 inch, 
I would say it's not worth it because there's like the law of diminishing returns comes into play. It is better, but is it that much better? Probably not. If you want the 12.9 inch for the size, because it's easier to do multitasking and you plan to use the iPad Pro as your like main device and the mini LED is there. And that's like another reason. Sure. But don't upgrade just for that. It's not that massive of a leap despite looking really good. And despite me believing that it's like the future of screen technology, at least in portable devices. Fair enough. Do you have anything you want to ask before we move on Dean, to the Android stuff? Nope. I'm good. I've asked everything. All right. Cool. Yeah, basically that's it. I don't know what else. But we've been talking about I've, Apple products for a lot of podcasts now. We're done. In three this weeks. Is it. We're done. Um, but yeah, Android 12. Android 12. I mean, Google I.O. happened, so there's lots of news coming out of that, which for those of you who are unfamiliar, Google I.O. is Google's big developer pro or big, big developer conference that happens once a year. Last year, it didn't happen actually because it was too fresh in the COVID times. But this year, they brought it back. They did it live as well for some reason, which was fun. Um, you know, Michael Pena was there. That was less fun. Um, but yeah, the biggest announcement, I think Android 12. I enjoyed Michael Pena. Um, okay. and right before, um, right before, uh, Android 12, I just wanted to say Lambda looks really cool. Um, and it looked like something that we could, like Lambda was their, like, it's like new natural voice processing for like assistant and how you interact with computers. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And it, it, they did an example of like someone just flirting with Pluto and uh, it was so funny that was like, <laughs> the best moment from the whole thing and like and pluto was talking back to it and like it was just it was very na- it seemed very natural and uh, i look forward to seeing that on future products probably in the next three years probably um yeah maybe true. Sooner, you're right but that's uh, i i just thought it was interesting yeah it's definitely like could pluto possibly was... have the biggest impact coming out of google io because like we both know or we all know starline Never really making it to consumers. Well, it's never but... going to get a commercial release, and if it does, they'll kill um, it after three months. But like, it but, was uh, very interactive, and you like, and you, like, like I should bring a sweat. Like, it was, it knew what to do. It was, it was like talking to a human, but it was Pluto, and I just think I kind yeah. of look forward to that. Part of the issue that I think anyone with like smart speakers realizes very quickly is like you need to talk to them very specifically. You don't talk to them like we talk to each other. You talk to them like it's a bad child who is not paying attention. Yeah, this I guy think, right I don't here. Know, that's great is very yeah. dumb like I, I yeah see what i mean like multiple times <laughs> and you're always like you have to talk to it with a different like cadence like okay yeah I'm exactly very clear with you please pay attention <laughs> yeah. yeah so hopefully this can like change that you can just be like talking much more natural like hey google like here you do this do that we're good okay um <laughs> but yeah anyway android 12 the big star of the show i think it's just a huge visual redesign if for those of you who don't know, Google's been using something called material design for years, maybe since 2014, um, which is just sort of like the look of its apps and the look of like core Google, you know, those fun colors, those floating like buttons, they call them fabs, like in Gmail, you'll see the compose button kind of like that or docs and on You've mobile. you covered too, it a lot on the site too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like material design a lot. I think it's really cool. I didn't cool. even know they were called fabs. That's cool. Yeah. It's like floating action button. Um, oh, cool. I like that. Yeah, yeah. And there's some other cool elements too, although it's been changing. It, it kind of got like shaken up a lot, to be honest, when Google implemented the gesture design, because a lot of like mm. the material design thing was like pulling in that drawer from the side. And then they were like, oh, you can't do that anymore. Eat it. Um, so here we are. <laughs> Android 12 is coming up, but I think it looks really sweet. Did you guys watch the trailer of the design a couple of times? I did. It looks yeah. sick. As As an iPhone user, it makes me jealous that I don't have that like operating system color matching stuff like that's so sick that's super cool so like i would love to, I would, to test that though go i'm hoping yeah. one of the beta two or three will have it hopefully we, yeah. currently we can't test it at all um it can be unlocked in the uh dvp developer beta um developer preview apparently but um it's just not usable but it does look cool and i sorry i cut you off patrick no i, I didn't i didn't really have much to add i was just gonna say that like Every year, there's always some kind of cool new Android feature. And I do use an Android device as like my secondary phone, but like I'm an iPhone guy. And it always makes me sad that like Apple doesn't let people customize the look of the operating system as much as Android does. I think that I think that will change. I think iOS 14 and all those like weird workarounds to getting custom apps and custom widgets and stuff really was like eye opening for just the industry in general. Like I think this is part of the reason yeah, why. Perhaps Google is going so heavily into customization, although this seems like something that's been in the oven for a little longer than that. But I think Apple at that point was like, okay, the next iOS update, we got to like give these people what they want. Like we stole the flashlight app. People didn't even really need that that bad. 
they want customization, let's give it to them. So hopefully that comes in iOS soon. But yeah, the sort of thesis of the new material design, which they're calling Material U, is that whatever on pixels, so this will be different on other phones. They'll have, you know, other manufacturers have the option to choose this or not. But on pixels, your uh, primary and accent colors of everything in the OS and including your apps, which all the Google apps are supposedly supposed to support this. That'll probably take three or four years to roll out. But ideally, all of the apps will support this and third-party apps will have the ability to support this as well. But like whatever your wallpaper is, the accent colors in Gboard, your notification shade, the now playing widget, the calculator app, the you know Google Calendar, all of that will now change colors to match your wallpaper, which just looks sick. That's cool. I don't know how else to say it. It looks awesome. I, um, I really, like, yeah. I really like, I really like the um, that idea. Um, I hope it's applied uh, more widely than they even said. Like, uh, you probably haven't seen it yet, Patrick. But if you pull up the settings menu in Android twelve, it is ugly. It is probably the worst. No, no, not quick settings. Yeah, yeah. I'm going diving deeper. What? What did? Oh wow. Okay. It's just like. That looks like a kid's and, phone. Yeah, ex- that's exactly it. It looks like a kid's phone, and I'm hoping if they that's apply, awful. I'm hoping if they apply um, this material U to even something like the settings menu, and make it all kind of like a like a like a pastel. Like, say if your display is like pastel, mm-hmm. if your display is purple, make it like a pastel purple, and make the highlights purple. I think that would really uh, make it feel more like. Like in a material you, I don't know. It just makes, I think it would make it, it would go even further. And I, I'd be yeah. looking forward to that. I think and that's the, I think that's what's going to happen. In, in the trailer, it even shows like points where like the app icons on your home screen are themed with the colors yeah. of your wallpaper. So I think that they're really going to push it as far as it can go. Um, but I went through the trailer like frame by frame. And these were just some of the things that I like picked out. I don't know if you guys have anything crazy to just to jump in as well, but like, there's going to be a ton of app icon shapes, it seems like, like arrows, like weird flower patterns, stars. There's one that's kind of like a three-tiered sort of like egg spilt on a plate shape. I don't know how else to explain it. Um, but it seems like we're really like going wacky with the app icons, and I'm pretty excited about that, to be honest. Have you gone through them at all in, in the, the beta? beta? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's they've, a... already, they've already added a couple. Yeah, I have the like triangle egg type one going right now, and I kind of love it. Um, although it doesn't extend into the app drawer in the beta, at least it's just on your home screen, mm-hmm. and then in That's the notification cool. shade a little bit. But the oh no, it is in the app drawer. Oh, mine are just huh. circles. I'm pretty boring, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, in the beta right now too, the volume slider has been revamped. It's like huge now. Um, but in the and- trailer, it looks a little different than it does in the beta. So I'm expecting that to change. Although I kind of love it the way that it is. We'll see what happens there. The squiggly line. What do you guys think about that? Just in the trailer, like you see the now playing, like, you know, when you ha- you're you playing something on like a, you can drag the slider. It looks like the half of that slider that's already been played is now like a moving squiggly line. I think it's a it nice touch. Confusing. It, kind of, it kind of reminds me of like, 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 uh, music, like, like a waveform. Yeah. Thank you. I can't think of that word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it, it, like you guys said with this uh, settings app, it, it maybe leans like a little too childish for me, but I kind of like I still kind of like it for that reason. But yeah, when my girlfriend Alex saw it, she was like screaming, she's like the squiggly line, no, <laughs> wow, <laughs> she was like, so excited. <laughs> so I'm excited to see that like come to just Google products in general. I think that'll be like very uh, defining and well, maybe we're calling it childish. I think part of this is that a lot of this is just meant to be fun. And if Google can just like make every part of the operating system kind of fun, I think that'll go, I think that'll work out well for them, to be honest. You know, they won't be stale, they won't be boring, they'll be fun. And people should react positively to that, I hope. I think my favorite Android phone is the Pixel 5, despite me using so many other ones. And I, I think that like, um, it, the material, what I've seen so far and, and what I've been able to use on with the beta, it seems to really complement the Pixel. And it like, more than any other like i don't think that you, you'll see one ui move to this because i don't think it, it matches as well mm. um i don't know how to explain that but uh i, I just feel like it's i'm excited for what google's doing and it, it looks it looks good so far on uh, what we've seen in that trail that trailer was 
uh, so hype. Yeah. yeah. So the, the only question that I have is like, so what if I were to, to download the beta now, like I was thinking about doing it this weekend and putting it on my pixel. Uh, I think I have a pixel four on my pixel four. Um, but like, is not everything available? Like, will I not be able to play around with those different like visual settings? No, it's no. like, I would yeah. say it seems like maybe a quarter or less is available now. I'm not going to do it then. I'm waiting. That For me, that's one of the big things with operating system updates is like when the look changes, I'm excited about that more than new features in some cases. And I love like yeah. what I saw at IO, like the direction Google's going with, with Android. It looks cool. Maybe like we talked about like childish in, in some ways, but also fun, which is neat, right? Whereas iOS yeah. to an extent feels really boring. And that has me interested in it. Like, I would have totally downloaded it this weekend if I could play around with that stuff. There's um, going to be eight I, betas from what I've read. Um, so we, and there's only, we're expecting to see a pixel, I want to say, in, well, it's expected to be an official launch probably in September, right? And it's May now. So May, June, July, August, September. That's four months. So we should be getting at least two beta updates a month. Okay. Um, As people who write news, this is good for us because they'll just like leak it a little bit out at a time in each beta yeah, and we'll be able yeah. to like keep the stories true, going, true. which is good. Um, but, but I, I actually, I, sorry, sorry to cut you off, Gene. I have a story actually that went live during the, while well, we're recording this podcast and it's just comparing the visual changes between Android 11 and the first beta. So like, I, just, I don't know, there's like, I want to say like 15 screenshots in there. So if you're curious about what's in the beta, um, that is now on our site. You can go ahead, Dean, sorry. Uh, I've lost my train of thought. I was just gonna. I, I was. I was gonna say like they're probably gonna roll. Uh, Material U does seem like it will be. Uh, it's probably like a lot of work for the developers, uh, like a lot of work. So it, it will probably roll out like slowly. Pieces and pieces of it, like how we're seeing now, will keep rolling out through um, through the eight beta updates. Uh, I read in the. Like compared to like the dev- developer preview one to developer preview three or four, like it has changed a lot. Um, yeah. In that time, like they've keep they keep adding more and more features to Material U, so um, they're probably just because the beta is so public and everyone downloads the beta beta now. I believe, like I think, like even just like not just us tech reviewers or not just people who are enthusiastic, like. I mean, people who are enthusiastic, enthusiast, yeah, enthusiastic about tech will download it. So I think they just want to make it more like like in the oven, like like get it ready a little bit more. But I I think we'll probably see it soon. Um. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I think by August we'll definitely have like a much better idea of what it's like. Hopefully. Um. One thing that they talked about, and I just I know we might have to wrap up soon. I'm not sure, but uh, one thing that they did kind of mention, and this is me grasping at straws. But they were saying, like, we want to bring this concept of material U to hardware as well. Now, the, to me, to me, this is where it starts to get a little brag wrestling at straws like, but to me, the concept of this new design is that the colors change. Right? Interesting. Can they okay. do that in hardware? Can the next will the next pixel can it change colors on the back? I mean that is that possible? That would be sick, but I don't think that that would ever happen. But it would be really neat. Like, yeah, I hope I hope that's what they, I'm assuming they didn't idea. mean that. Yeah, they just meant like this, like fun and rounded edges, probably. But like, ah, I just want a pixel that's like I set my wallpaper to to pink, and then the back becomes yeah. pink, and I'm living the dream. I don't think that'll happen, buddy. I'm, I'm gonna keep dreaming. Somebody right. pinch me. I gotta wake up. Bennett, uh, do you want to just quickly go through the like? Because I know we gotta wrap up in just a couple of minutes. Do you want to just quickly rapid fire go through the other major announcements, like the camera improvements? Oh, I was just gonna and- say very. Oh wait, no, you go first. Go first. Sorry. Um. Yeah. So there's camera improvements. Google said they're working to make the cameras take better pictures of people of color, which is a huge thing. I know, like Dean, when you review phones all the time, you're like, I took a selfie and lightened my face up in a weird way. Please, manufacturers, respect me. So I've been doing reviews since 2017 of phones, and this has been an issue for almost every single phone I've used. So uh, I'm excited. Like I, Super I cool. was in the, I was in the, uh, watching the presentation, and I'm like starting to actually tear up because it means a lot to me that they're uh, working on that. I, I just want to take a, a good selfie. I am a selfie. Uh, I love selfies. Yeah, yeah, use that word. Uh, I love selfies, and it's something, and I love taking pictures, and I'm really excited for that. 
And then there's yeah, the good. Wear OS, like, Tizen Which partnership. Which is what I was yeah. going to say. It's very exciting. Uh, I didn't see yeah, that coming. I saw a rumor. And I'm like, that is a rumor that is not going to happen. Samsung will not do that. Because the rumor said the Galaxy Watch 4 will use Wear OS. Saw that headline, saw the publication. I don't remember which publication it was, but it wasn't like, it wasn't The Verge. It wasn't Engadget. It was a smaller publication. And I was just like, nah, this is dumb. Oh, but yeah, it's very exciting. Um, I've never used Wear OS and I've used a lot of Tizen. And Tizen is pretty good, but it lacks a lot of, um support that say like apple watch users experience and i think the combination of you google and tizen together um more people, and fitbit is in there too and fitbit, yeah yeah i think google is we're doing it's kind of taken over this uh, smartwatch market and it will kind of just be like wear os and whatever apple watch os and watch um like kind of like how it's android and iphone so yeah, quick sure. quickly, Dean. Like, what what is the Wear OS Tizen partnership? Like, is Tizen now becoming Wear OS? Is Tizen just sharing resources with Wear OS to improve different aspects of it? I didn't like totally understand that from the presentation. I also totally didn't understand that. Um, from what I read and from a, it seemed like their Tizen is sharing Wear OS resources. I okay. mean, sharing its resources with Wear OS to improve it and to so like to, they say they want to improve speed, they want to improve battery life. Um, the battery life thing is what Tizen does really well, right? Like, so yeah, that's... Tizen does that really well, um, which is great for Wear OS. But the way Samsung, that person who's the Samsung person, uh, when he went up to speak, the way it made it seem is like there will be a Galaxy Watch 4 with Wear OS instead of Tizen. And Interesting. that makes me feel like, are they going to kind of bow out in the watch? area are they like because tizen also supports tvs and other samsung products um so will they bow out to wear os and kind of share some of the money there or something it's who knows really i think i think we'll learn yeah. more about it later this week like there's going to be developer sessions and stuff like that i think it's that sort of situation where mm -hmm. there'll be more clarity to it probably by the time this podcast comes out and then someone's going to message us and be like all right you didn't do reporting or something like that it's also like we don't have time to watch every developer session. I've only yeah. watched the one about the Android 12 design, and I literally watched that before I started work this morning. So it's like, you know, we can only do so much. So, yeah, like 30 yeah, I, minutes to an hour long sessions. Like, I don't know, like, I've got work to do. I know we have a bit, of, a bit of a hard out that we're already over, actually. So I think we're going to skip what we're playing this week, that segment. Um, in general, like, I thought IO was interesting, but I was also bored, I think, because there's no hardware. We didn't see the Pixel Buds A which was surprising. Like we basically know those watch. exist and they weren't there. We didn't see a pixel watch. There's lots of stuff that, that, that wasn't there. I guess like really quickly in like one sentence, what did you guys think of IO? Really quickly. I thought it was uh, pretty boring. And Android 12 is looking good. And material U is kind of sexy. Lambda is pretty cool. And, um, we actually might see a Pixel Watch now. Like because in they, the future? Or in mean? the future. Not, I mean, not now. But I mean, like, say oh, okay. say in the, the October made by Google event, Pixel Watch, because they are putting a lot more work into Wear OS. Yeah, that's true. I think for me, it's just all about this new material theme. Like, I just want my phone to, like, take, take a color scheme from my wallpaper I want to see that color scheme on my smartwatch. I want to see it on my smart displays. Every like when I open Google Maps on the web, I want to see that color scheme. I will. I want Material U to be prevalent everywhere that Google touches. I know that that will not happen for ever. Maybe five years from now, but like, I just want it so bad. I'm so hyped about that design. There, I mean, the camera thing actually, the inclusivity of it is pretty monumental so it's hard to discredit that but i love that design and i want to see it so bad but all right i think that's how it was for me cool i think that's a good place to wrap it up thanks for listening to the syrupcast you can find me on twitter at, at patrick underscore rourke and of course on mobile syrup.com bennett where can people find you uh you can find me on twitter and instagram at the brad fad and a lot of my work on mobile syrup.com as well plus uh, we've got like tons of stories about android 12 right now you know have you have a pixel how to download the beta it's just roundups you know, stuff about the camera, stuff about Wear OS, all sorts of everything from IO we've got on the website now. So if you're looking for IO news, mobilestartup.com. And Dean, where can people find you? 
I am at Instagram and Twitter at the Daily Dean. Daily spelled D A L E Y, like my last name. And as always, you can find all of our content on mobilesyrup.com and also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at, at mobilesyrup. Thanks for listening. See you.